Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. Today we are going to be trying out the new Kaleidos collection. Mostly just the eyeshadows though. Obviously I have nothing on my face right now, so I am going to be doing a look with you today. I have another look that I've done with these shadows, uh, but Kaleidos' new collection or most recent collection is called the Fresh Fantasy. I believe that is what it is. And in it there are two of their six pan shadows palettes. And then there are also three different contour powders and then there is also a lip gloss so I'm gonna be testing some of this stuff out I feel like I'm just like getting into business right now but I will have timestamps so just to give you a little overview of how this video is gonna go I'm gonna do the demo like with you first then I will get into probably my thoughts and stuff like that and then I will have a section for comparisons as well as like my second kind of look using the other palette just to give you a little syllabus of what we're learning today Clyde sent this to me this video is not sponsored though how many more things I think that's kind of it I'm gonna zoom us in we're gonna get started and I'll talk you through this little look we're gonna do all right we are up close and personal hello everyone you know I had to use the purple palette today so this one is the futurism six lunar lavender palette i really loved the packaging i really love just the whole vibe of this collection honestly i think they did a really great job with packaging and like selling the fresh fantasy that they have going on this is what the inside looks like i have done a look with this palette yesterday and then the other palette i've also done two looks so it's not quite a first impression but i also wouldn't really call anything i'm giving like a final review either so just keep that in mind anyway okay Okay, let's get started. I have a bit of a plan because of what happened when I used this yesterday. So I'm first gonna go in with this lavender shade. I'm gonna be using that as a transition. And I did prime, I didn't prime with their primer. I just used my MAC Paint Pot because I am trying to use that baby up and nothing will stop me from it, okay? So <laughs> keep that in mind, I guess. They do have their own primer, but I feel like eyeshadows, you know, they've worked with other primers for me in the past, so. I don't think that's a big issue. I am going pretty light-handed with this purple shade. I'm just building up a nice transition in the crease. I don't know what it is, but I love doing a halo eye and purples. Like, it's just, if I see purples, I'm like, hmm, halo eye immediately. <laughs> that's what I should do. So I am going to be doing that today, and that's what I attempted yesterday. But I just didn't, if I'm being honest, I have not loved both of my first looks with these palettes like I thought I would. I was excited for this collection. I really loved the vibe, even if the other palette's a bit more neutral and whatnot. And so there was something about how the first looks turned out that I didn't love. I will say with the Sashimi City one, um, I did like my second look a lot better. So. I don't know what that's about. I don't know if that's a me thing or these shadows. I feel like in the past, I've always been able to create a look off the bat that I loved. So I'm not really sure what's quite going on. All that being said, I'm trying to be a little bit more specific about how I'm applying the shadows because the biggest thing I noticed is like layering wasn't super easy, I guess. I don't know, it just, everything seemed to just turn into one thing and I don't know. It just didn't go as planned. So I'm trying to combat that as much as possible and see if I can help it. And since we are um, doing the halo eye, I'm going to the inner and outer corner with this. Um, sometimes I just keep it more on the outer, but I am bringing it in as well. I'm now moving to a smaller, like, fluffy like just a small fluffy brush i'm going to be using that to blend some of that light lavender in the inner corner so we can start working on that halo eye i don't know if you can tell but this lavender color also does a thing where it kind of sinks into the skin so uh, it starts off light and then like as it kind of i don't know i don't know if it soaks up the oils or just settles on the eye it does deepen up a little bit it's not necessarily bad. I've noticed that with other like lavender and like pastel shades in general, but just something I thought I would mention. And also these stain too. They stained my eyelids pretty bad yesterday. All right, so this is where we're at so far. I like where it's going. 
I'm feeling good. I am now going to, I know it seems like next I should go into this purple, but what I noticed with last time when I used it is that that purple didn't really look too much different. I know they look different in the pan, but on the eyes, I didn't find it gave me enough depth. And then I felt like when I went to layer one of these deeper browns, I just felt like it wasn't packing on very well. So I kind of want to avoid having that extra powder this time and just go in straight with the deeper color to start deepening up the inner and outer corner and see maybe if that helps. I don't know. That's my game plan to try to like make the eye look I tried to make yesterday better. Okay, <laughs> so I'm just using the same little brush. I'm gonna start on the inner corner because I feel like you don't need as much and I'm, you know, trying to really pat and then blend instead of me and my blendy self. I mean, I am still blending, don't get me wrong. Okay, I don't know. It seems to be doing an okay job. Definitely, I feel like better than yesterday, so that's good. But I am definitely babying it just to kind of see. And I mostly am trying to make sure that the purple comes through in that blend of the like outer edge. But I definitely need more depth that isn't purple than what this palette offers in terms of purple, whatever. I don't know if that made sense. I'm using a smaller fluffy brush and I'm going back in with the lavender just to start blending out the edges and kind of working them together and seeing how that goes. I might even add some of that darker purple on top of this dark color we just laid down uh, and see how that's going. All right, I'm gonna try using that deeper purple and just, I don't know, adding it kind of to the outer edges to blend and just add more purple and just kind of see how it goes. All right, this is kind of where we're at. I'm not sure, you guys. I don't know what it is. I can't tell if it's me. I can't tell if it's the shadows. All I know is I'm having a harder time than I like to have with shadows in general and also than I've had with Kaleidos shadows specifically in the past, so I don't really know. We're gonna move on from this portion, at least for now, I can always kind of keep blending a little bit later. We're gonna move into this shade. Oh, look at that shine. This shade here is so beautiful, but I'm definitely going to be using a glitter glue. I used it yesterday just kind of with my finger to see what I could do. And I definitely prefer the Kaleidos ones with a glitter glue or even wetting your brush. I find though wetting your brush is definitely different than packing than like tapping a shadow on. I feel like you still get the flakiness, but you get the stick. Um, whereas with wetting, sometimes it can make it more of like a foiled metallic. It just depends on what you want, but I like a flaky look. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it in the center of the eye. And then as I have less, kind of move it around. And I'm gonna do one eye at a time. So I'm just gonna tap this on the center. And when I have less on my finger, I'm gonna take it to the inner and outer corner. All right, so that's where we're at. I immediately feel like that makes this look like so much better. I really like the way it applied. I love the shine. I, I love this glittery shadow. I really like this formula from Kaleidos. I'm gonna try to finish this thing up. I'm gonna use an inner corner shade. I'm gonna use that other lighter purple. It has more of like a golden purple reflex. And I sprayed my brush just to get a nice, I don't know, so it's not too powdery, I guess. And I'm just gonna be putting that on the inner corner. On the eye, this one's definitely more pinky toned. In the past, I've added more depth at this point, but I kind of don't want to F it up. So I'm going to put mascara on. I'm leaving my bottom lash line bare. I've just been enjoying a cleaner look on the bottom, and I think it's nice to kind of offset a more dramatic look on top. So um, I'm going to do that, and then I will come back. We'll do the lip because there's a lip gloss in here, and then we'll uh, see the final look. All right, so here is where we are with the mascara. Definitely feel like it pulls the look together. I am really liking the look so far. And now let's add this lip. This is the Lucid Lip in Dramatize. And although it looks pretty like pigmented here, I've in the past seen that these don't really add too much color. I like the gloss formulation from Kaleidos. It's not my favorite ever, but I think it's like nice feeling on the lips. It's not sticky. 
I just want them to come out with like cream formulas that are like semi-opaque, like not too opaque. And also I would love ones without sparkle, although the sparkle isn't too bothersome on the lips. You can't really feel it too much. I think that looks nice. I know this is kind of like more of a red, but I think it pairs pretty decently with the eye. Okay, let me zoom in so you can see like pretty detailed what the eyes look like and then we'll get into some thoughts. I think that it looks really nice. Like I love the finished result of this. If you can see, there is some fallout from the like flaky glittery shades. If I'm honest, I'm pretty used to that level of fallout um, depending on what flaky type things I'm using. So I'm not really concerned about that, but whatever your style is, you might want to know that. All right, guys, let's just get into the thoughts. I'm gonna start with the lip gloss. I think this is nice. It seems consistent with their past formulas. I'm just not, I'm not the biggest lip product person, but I do think they make solid lip products. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Moving on to the palettes. Let's start off with the lavender, the Lunar Lavender palette. I really like the finished look that I have on today. I think that it looks nice. I like the color combination in here. I love that they have two shimmers. I personally would love like three of those shimmery sparkly shades and then three mattes, but I know a lot of people like mattes. I feel like in theory, this also seems like it have a lot of good contrast because it has that deeper shade, but then it has the two purples, but also a lighter. Like I think it's a nice, balance of colors but it's interesting because i've had the same experience now with both of these palettes and that's been that the first look that i did with this i went in assuming everything would go pretty normal and i don't know i just went for it and i did not like the look i didn't feel like it blended super well i didn't really like how things were applying i don't know it just was not a good <laughs> a good time and the end result of the look i also felt was subpar and then second time using this palette today with you guys i still had difficulty it still didn't go perfectly, but I definitely like the end look. So it was not a fun ride or journey, <laughs> but I do like the finished result. So I don't know, just something very interesting. I just feel like I haven't necessarily had that experience with Kaleido shadows in the past. I feel like every time I've used them, I've liked them pretty immediately. And so I don't know why that difference is. I don't, I can't tell you from the two times that I've used each of these palettes, if it's from me or what's going on there. I'm not really sure. With the Sashimi City palette, I liked the idea of this palette as well. Even though it's a little bit more neutral, I do like these peachy tones. I will say in terms of this one, I think in camera, you can tell a little bit more that this is the deepest brown and that one's a little less deep, but I feel like they're pretty similar looking like in person. And I think there was definitely an opportunity to do a different color, like maybe keep the darkest shade and change this one out or go even darker and then make the other brown. I don't know, something lighter. I feel like there was something there that could have been tweaked to just make it even better. Same with the other palette. I love the shimmers in here. I think they're really great and they're definitely one of my favorite things from Kaleidos and they performed really, really well. In the look that you're gonna see me do, that was the second time using this palette, like I said, and I recreated once again the first look that I did because I just didn't have a good experience with it. I didn't know what was happening and I had a little bit of difficulty. Some things went better than the first time I did it and then other things I felt like it still was like uh, not my favorite in terms of actually using the product but then I did like the final look I think it looked really beautiful I used both of these shimmers on the lid and did this kind of two-toned eye look I don't know I did it like where you're cutting the lid in the bottom and top half instead of like the front and like middle half. Anyway, I loved the final look. Once again, all of the, you know, stuff going into the look maybe wasn't the best, but the end result was really, really quite beautiful and I really liked it. So in terms of like, are these worth it? I'm not, I would love to know if you guys have gotten these yet. I know they were on pre-order for a while, but I'd love to know your thoughts. I saw Tina, the Fancy Faces review, and she actually had very similar thoughts to me. So I don't know if that influenced me or if we're just having the same experience. I We'll leave her review down below. Definitely go check her out. If you're not subscribed to her, subscribe to Tina. Okay, I love Tina. So yeah, I definitely need to use these more to give you guys some more thoughts. It just wasn't what I was expecting. I thought this collection was so beautiful. I really bought into the fresh fantasy of it all. I loved the promo photos. I love the looks I've been seeing on Instagram. And I am, am excited to play around still with these and do more simple looks, which I definitely am prone to like, I'm gonna put one matte shade all over and then tap those shimmery shades on and be done with it. Like that's more of a typical look for me, but I wanna kind of test as many shadows
crowded as I can and do something a little bit more out there, especially for a video. So I will come back to you. I'm gonna come back to you and give you more finalized thoughts. I know a lot of you guys have already bought these, so I hope that they work for you. I hope that it's just some weird thing with me. It's obviously not unusable. It's not like, the worst thing ever. I just wasn't expecting it. I think that's like the biggest thing here is like I've had just really great experiences and then this one just wasn't that and maybe that's why it's a little bit more shocking or different for me. I don't know, but I just love those shimmering shades. I am so happy that they continue those in their palettes and I am still excited to see what they come out with in the future. Now you may be wondering why I haven't even mentioned the sculpting palettes. These are the Charisma Contour palettes. There are three different colors and the reason I'm not going to be using these in the video and not giving any type of review is just because this isn't a product that I use. I don't use contouring products. I really don't use powder on my face at all. I don't use contouring powder and I just felt like these aren't really something that I would even be able to give that great of a review on like I don't know I just didn't want to I didn't want to I didn't want to do it <laughs> I didn't want to open these so instead I am going to be giving these away it's gonna be just in the US just because I have to pay shipping on three different things I will have an international giveaway coming soon anyway uh, the only thing you have to do to enter to win these is to leave a comment it could be anything and in that comment definitely let me know how to get a hold of you Instagram email whatever it is and also let me know what color you are this is cool and light there's warm and medium and then there is also warm and deep. I really don't even want to open up the packaging. So I'm going to put swatch photos up and you can see those. Um, but let me know which one would work best for you. And I will pick winners at random and send these off. Again, go watch Tina's video because she does like open them and show them uh, if you want more of a review. I will say based off of her video, it does go quite deep, but there is a pretty big gap between the medium and the dark shade. So I feel like Kaleidos is trying to branch out outside of like lip products and eye products. And I feel like they're definitely trying to find their way. <laughs> They've had a few stumbles and they seem very open to feedback. So I'm excited still to see what they do, but I definitely hope to see them improve on some of those areas. And yeah, okay, I think that's it for thoughts. I honestly wanted to keep this review type video pretty chill. I know a lot of other people have done these. So I'm gonna leave some other reviews for you to check out. I haven't seen most of them. I think I've only seen Tina. So you can get some more feedback on other creators and how they use them and their experiences. I mean, I have to say though, I really do like the finished eye look. I like the finished eye look. I don't know, it's tough. I feel so in between, which is not what I was expecting. I was expecting to just be like, duh, I love it, duh, hello. I love all the Kaleido stuff I've got, but um, this one's just slightly different, a little different, I don't know. Let's get into some swatches. Let's get into some comparisons. Yeah, let's do it. show you guys these palettes next to each other so you could kind of see especially with the browns we're gonna do some like swatching and whatnot I thought it'd be interesting to see how different all the browns were so there are some of the browns these are the two from the sashimi city palette and as you can tell they are different one is more red uh, but I feel like they're very similar and that's kind of what I was saying with like I don't think they needed both of them um, but that's that palette I'm gonna go individually now and show 
show them against other palettes and also swatch out any potential dupes or similar shades. Let's start off with the lavender, Lunar Lavender palette. This is it next to the Cyber Bronze palette. I really don't feel like there's too much similar. The only things I could think are the two matte browns. So that's what they look like. This one's from the Lunar Lavender palette and this one's from the Cyber Bronze. One definitely has a little more purple, but kind of similar. This one's just more mauve -y. We are going in like no particular order. The next palette that I have here, this is the, what is this, turquoise? Electro Turquoise palette. And again, we have two of these darker browns, so I'm gonna swatch those out next to each other. The one in the Electro Turquoise is quite a bit darker, even though they look similar in the pan. Next, one of my favorite palettes is Astro Pink. I don't feel like they have too much. I'm gonna swatch these three out and see them, but I also am gonna swatch the blue and the purple just so you can see the difference. Let's do the fun ones first. So we have this beautiful shade. And then this is my favorite shade from the Astro. And you can see the difference there. And there they are swatched out. So you can see the shine. They both have more of that sheer base, but this more blue one from the Astro Pink has like a black base to it. And then this one was a tiny bit more powdery as well. All right, and then last, I wanna do these ones because I feel like these are very similar colors out of these palettes. So those are all three of the swatches. These two are from the Astro Pink, and then this one's from the Lunar Lavender. It's definitely different. This one's more pink, this one's more purple. This one's more warm, that one's more cool. Similar though, similar. Next on the list, we have the VR Neons and absolutely nothing is similar. Like nothing's even close, so I don't need to swatch it out, but if you wanted to see them next to each other, here they are. And last we have the Sci-Fi Greens palette. And once again, nothing is similar. There's no purples at all, nothing mauve -y. There's not even a brown in here. But there they are next to each other. I wish they could be closer, but this packaging is really weird, especially with the up-down. So I hope you get enough of a an idea here. The last palette I want to compare the Lunar Lavender palette to is the Escape Pod palette. This is their most recent palette before these guys. And because there's some purples, I definitely want to swatch these out and see the differences. So we're going to swatch out first the mattes. These ones are from the Escape Pod. My hand has also been like washed a billion times, so sometimes that can affect the swatching. So don't judge the swatches too harsh, more for color than for performance right now. And then let's do these and I'm gonna line them up like this. So there they are. In the two lighter ones, you can tell that the one in the Lunar Lavender palette is a little bit more warm toned. And then when it comes to the deeper ones, it's the opposite and the one in the Lunar Lavender palette is a bit more cool toned. So they are definitely different. They seem similar when they're away from each other, but swatched out, you can see the differences. My hand got stained from like four seconds. <laughs> Next, I wanna do the purples. So I'm gonna do these shimmery, beautiful purples. I love these types of formulations from Kaleidos. So those are the ones from the Escape Pod palette. And let's see, like this one's so powdery. It's like flaking off. This one's not nearly as powdery. And then the bottom ones are the Lunar Lavender. Is it Lunar Lavender? I think so, <laughs> palette. They're all definitely different. This reminds me more of like the highlighter in the blush duo, but definitely as eyeshadows, all different. I thought about it and I thought I might as well swatch these two browns to those just so you can see the difference, but I know that they will be different. You can tell just by looking at them, but why not while we're here? Definitely I feel like there's a difference in formulation when it comes to that matte and that matte, but I don't know. Anyway, those are the differences. Definitely totally different. This is more mauve, this isn't as deep, like this is more red toned, but there are some comparisons. All right, and now we're gonna do the same thing with the sashimi palette. Such a beautiful neutral mini palette. Again, I just wish one, like if it was just that, or if it was just that, or if one of these was different, it would be like perfect. Starting off, let's go with the Sci-Fi Greens palette. These to me are all very different. I feel like the only thing that's even remotely similar are the yellows, so I might as well swatch those out for you. There they are on my finger. Those are the two. This one's the Sci-Fi Greens. This one is from the Sashimi palette. And once again, I don't know, 
they are swatching differently on my hand. I don't know if that means it's a formula change or whatnot, but just something I'm noting, they're not performing the same in a swatch. I mean, how much that means, I'm not really sure, but I think it's something to note in an observation I'm having. Next, we have the VR Neons palette, and once again, really nothing similar in here. Nothing at all similar. Next, we have the Astro Pink palette, and again, I don't think any of these are even similar enough to swatch out. There's no browns, these are definitely mauve, this is peach, that's yellow, so yeah, totally different palettes. Here is the Electro Turquoise palette. I don't think that there's anything in here that's super similar enough, but I'm gonna swatch out nonetheless because let's swatch something. I'm gonna do these fun shades. So this one is from the Electro Turquoise palette, and this one's similar, but obviously not the same. One is way more cool toned and silvery. One is more peachy golden. But again, with formula, I still think that these newer ones are slightly more powdery. They still give a great amount of shine. I don't think it's a bad change. I just do notice that. It makes them, I think, slightly more delicate. And I thought I might as well swatch the browns. So let's do that. There they are on the fingers. You can see the difference there. My hand was still a little bit wet but the one from the Electro Turquoise is obviously very different from the other two. And even then, they look similar, man. They keep looking similar every time. Last for the small palettes, we have the Cyber Bronze, which is going to be the closest one to this one since it's the other most neutral palette. I do see some similarities in terms of the browns and even this kind of yellow shade, so we'll swatch those out. Let's do the yellowish browns first. You can see the difference right there. Definitely different. So there they are, definitely different. I mean, there's no question. And then let's do the browns, especially, I think we can just do this one, right guys? Like we know this one's not really, but this is another kind of ready brown and I feel like it's similar. Those are all very similar, especially these two, especially these two, which that would be that one and that one. They're very similar. I think they'd all translate pretty similarly on the eyes as well. And the final stop for palette comparisons is the Escape Pod. The one that's looking the most the same, are, I'm gonna do the two shimmery shades. And honestly, that's kind of it. I mean, these two browns, you can tell, like the, this brown's deeper, so I just don't feel like we need to swatch them. This will perform way deeper. We saw that in the last swatch comparison. But let's do these two, which I feel like are similar to the Sashimi palette. And once again, I find that these aren't nearly as powdery as the new ones. But like this one's not powdery, but that one is. I don't know. On the bottom, we have the Sashimi this is like a golden sparkle. This is like a pink and gold orange sparkle. And then the top, similarly a pink and gold orange sparkle and a gold sparkle, but I do feel like they look different. They're definitely different. And honestly, I find that these two are way more shiny and spectacular, so, but I like the sashimi ones better. All right, so that was everything with palettes, but I did wanna swatch out the lip glosses just in case, cause I felt like the new one, which is this end one, was very similar and I wanted to see what they look like compared to similar colored glosses in the line. I'm gonna start with Dramatize. That's the newest one. So there it is with one swatch. I'm gonna build it up a little bit just so we can really see what the color is and what it looks like. So that is Dramatize. Next we have Hypnotize. This came out, I believe, with the Escape Pod palette. This one's a bit more fuchsia or berry as opposed to red. Swatched out, there is a slight difference, but because these are very sheer, which I love, like that's one of the things I like, it does make them look pretty similar, I think, in the swatches. And last, this came out with their first run of the Lucid Lips. This is Fantasize. I believe this is a different applicator as well on this lip gloss. This one definitely has the most like duochrome aspect to it. The other ones have sparkle, but they're not really like shifty. So here they are all out and swatched. I think they're different enough. I don't think someone needs all of them, but I think that each of them has its own kind of place. So for the look I'm gonna do using the Sashimi City palette, I'm going to recreate something I've already done. I'm gonna take this peachy shade first and I'm gonna take that on a fluffy brush. I'm just gonna be blending that into the crease. I always start on the outer half because that's where I like the most pigment and then work my way in as I have less on the brush. Now 
Now that I have that built up pretty well on the outer corner and just in the crease, I'm going to take one of the deeper shades. I'm gonna go with the one next to the peach. And I'm gonna take that on what I consider a pinched fluffy brush and I'm just going to be wiggling that in the outer corner, just building up a little bit of depth. I want something overall pretty light. In general, I don't like anything too deep, but I will say that these don't layer quite how I, I would expect them to. I feel like they go a little patchy on me. I'm just gonna blend out the outer corners with that same first peach shade we used. This eye definitely blended out better. I don't know what was going on with that. I'm gonna take this kind of yellow brown shade and I'm using a fluffier blending brush than we've used thus far. And I'm just gonna take that and blend it into this upper part of the brow bone. When I used this shade before, it was more like orangey yellow than I expected. So with that experience, I thought it would look nice kind of punched in up here. Like that one blends so nice. For the lid shade, I'm gonna use a glitter glue. Uh, when I did this before, I didn't. And it was fine, but it definitely had some fallout. So I'm just gonna avoid some of that. I don't talk about it a ton, but there's definitely fallout with any of these like very shimmery and like flaky shades. You most likely are gonna get fallout if you're not using like a glitter glue or something that's really gonna hold it onto the eye. So that's not like a unique thing with this palette, but I do want to kind of avoid that. So I'm gonna go in with the pink shimmer first. And I'm gonna lay that down on everything up into where we laid that yellow down in the front part of the brows, all over the lid, into that mat. And I always just love using my fingers. And now I'm gonna take a little bit more of that glitter glue. I'm gonna go right on top of what we already laid down on the lid. And then I'm gonna take the other shimmery shade and keep this closer on the lid. So it's kind of like a two-tone color. And then once I have that down, I'm just kind of taking the pink and then I'm just blending them kind of into each other. I just want both the colors on my lid. So I'm gonna take a dense brush and I'm just going to be patting on that outer corner on top of what we lay down, but I'm just tapping it for blending. So that way I'm not like moving around too much of that pigment, but I'm bringing back a little bit of that depth since I did bring that pink over on the eye. I think for the bottom lash line, I wanna keep it really simple and really not do anything, just let my lashes shine through. But I am gonna take just a highlighter and I'm gonna use that for the inner corner just to have something not quite as sparkly. I'm gonna add some mascara and I'll show you guys the final look. All right, so here is the final look. I really like it, just kind of simple. I'll give you a close up though. I like the two-tone of color, and I feel like usually when you do a two-tone look, it's like the inner and then the outer, but instead we're doing like the bottom and the upper. I don't know, I love it. I think it's really pretty. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my first thoughts on these palettes. I definitely want to play around. I don't hate these palettes by any means, and I don't think they're bad. I just was disappointed with the fact that I was having some trouble with them, which I just haven't experienced in the past. So I will keep you guys updated on these as I use them. I'd love to know your thoughts. And yeah, other than that, I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.